That is a look at Clearwater, Florida. Rescues happening just moments ago. Sun is coming up there. They're starting the rescue and recovery efforts. And our Ginger Z rode out the storm in Fort Myers, and she is, she's back now to show us what it was like. Good morning again, Ginger. Hey, good morning to you, Michael. Yes, we had stayed at the same hotel in Fort Myers for Hurricane Ian. We knew this one would be far less impactful, but boy, we still took on a ton of surge. Check it out. As Hurricane Milton approached Southwest Florida, I was tracking it every step of the way. I can't even stand where I was before. The surge has come up. The Gulf of Mexico now pushing in and about to breach the pool. Around 8.30 p.m., Hurricane Milton making landfall near Siesta Key. We've had to climb up here in the last hour because the surge has overtaken the entire pool deck. Minute by minute, the storm growing more intense. Excuse me, my hat keeps flying off, so I'm really starting to <laughs> feel these winds. We've been taking these onshore winds now for a while, so the surge just keeps coming up. I can't even stand down there anymore. There was a pool on the pool deck. It is full with water from the Gulf of Mexico. And right behind me, that shed shows how far up the water has made it to the doorknob and growing. Oh, you see that power flash, huge splash of the Gulf of Mexico taking over the entire pool deck here. The surge is still increasing. The sky over Fort Myers pitch black as more than 1.8 million people are without power, including us. Well, our power's out and uh, you can see why the surge is getting big. I think we'll see a lot of power outages overnight. We'll get rid of Milton by afternoon, but not before it leaves behind up to 18 inches of rain, and that's for places like Tampa Bay that are on track for their wettest season on record. Southwest Florida got super lucky, especially around Fort Myers, that most of that onshore flow started coming in just after low tide. So a high tide would have been this morning. The timing worked out that it moved faster, and we got real fortunate. I think between five and six feet of surge, uh, which you know, is still considerable around Fort Myers. But I also wanted to share with you a few other things uh, that we witnessed and that were important to the story because we still don't know surge numbers from closer to the eye wall. One of the big reasons we cover these storms on the dirty side, as we call it, is because of that onshore flow. You see how it made landfall at Siesta Key? We moved down here. You remember we were in Tampa because we wanted to emphasize that that onshore flow is where the biggest surge happens. Now, on the back side, you get that anti surge that Witt was describing earlier, uh, Tampa Bay kind of pouring back out into the ocean because these things rotate clockwise and so counterclockwise excuse me here's some of the hot headlines some of the gusts were upwards of 102 miles per hour for st petersburg but we're moving this thing out now the center is over the atlantic already hurricane warnings should subside in the next hour or two we're still picking up big winds just a few hours ago daytona beach had an 87 mile per hour gust so that'll slip east and then we will start to see those winds diminish but surge is still going to be an issue because you're still pushing water back at the coast. So Jacksonville Beach, New Smyrna Beach, Daytona, Cape Canaveral, almost there to Vero, three to five feet. And then if you're on the other side, you may end up seeing some of the water push away in that anti-surge type thing. So we're, we're keeping an eye on all of the forecasts, but again, we're pretty much done by late morning, early afternoon with Milton. And I'm so grateful that they evacuated so well around here because when you evacuate, you'll have a lot of damage to homes, I'm sure, in Venice, Florida, uh, or up near, you know, where it made landfall and Rotunda. But guys, we are very fortunate to be standing here now.